You are Locked On Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, welcome. This is Locked On Boston College. I am your host, AJ Black. Today's show is brought to you by Rock Auto. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit Rock Auto and tell them that Locked On sent you. On today's show, we're going to start diving into future opponents for Boston College football. We're going to do this over the next couple of weeks. So what we're going to do today is go over um, the games against Colgate and UMass. So we get a little taste of some of the beginning of the season. We'll get into each of those opponents and what we should expect uh, for the Eagles heading into both of those games. And then later in the week, we'll continue going through each opponent, kind of getting a feel for each of them. And then eventually I'm going to have on um, guest hosts with me from different shows and uh, different people who cover these schools to get their perspective as well. So we're going to really kind of like dive in and get some information on some of our opponents as we head forward. But first, we always start off our podcast with news. On Monday, the big news story uh, that came out in terms of me that I thought was really interesting was that um, BC uh, football, which begins its practices on Friday, will have their uh, first practice, and the media members who want to attend have to be vaccinated. They sent out a uh, notification that if you're in the media, you have to present proof of vaccination to go on campus. They are the third or fourth school in the ACC, depending on, on who you talk to, that have um, mandated this. So they join Wake Forest and Notre Dame as schools that are doing this. And there's other schools across the country that are doing this as well. Smart way to just keep people safe. I'm not going to get into this because COVID vaccines just get everyone in a huff. So I, and this is not a place we're here to talk about sports, but just thought that was an interesting piece. Um, so in terms of me, I'm going to try to go to some practices this year. I will be going. Um, I know this weekend I'm going to try if I can go Saturday, if I can. Um, but with I, I have a baptism this week and I have to go do for my daughter and there's a bunch of other things. So I, I might try to go a few times here and there. Uh, so you'll get live reports from me. So I hope you enjoy those as well. Uh, in terms of other news. SI All American, who is part of my BC Bulletin network. So, BC Bulletin is part of Sports Illustrated and the Fan Nation Network. SI All American is the recruiting branch of that. They are led by John Garcia. They every month release their top 25 programs in terms of the class of 2022 rankings. And BC has kind of been in there all along. They started off at 13, they rose in June, and they rose up to eight in July. They're back down to 13 again in August. Uh, Now they said, you know, they BC had a good July land in Kivon Wright and Gilbert Tongrongu, which uh, they landed on July 4th. Uh, But a lot of other programs have started to make their moves too. You've seen more and more programs getting those blue bloods, uh, getting rising up on that list. So I would not expect BC to stay that high very much longer. They're going to probably continue to to slide down just like Rutgers. Rutgers is at 16. um, But Boston College still has a few spots left, and we're still looking to see who the Eagles uh, target with those spots. Um, I know Cam Johnson at St. Francis would be amazing, and that would absolutely help their uh, recruiting rankings as he's a uh, four-star and a very highly regarded cornerback um, if they could land him. over, um, But they still have to fight off Virginia Tech for him. Uh, he's one to watch for. And Dom Foster, an athlete, which we interviewed on BC Bullet, and you can check out our interview. It's under BC Premium, but if you want to sign up for that, that's a great way to kind of check out what we're doing there. Uh, he's another one. He's from Ohio. His camp work blew up, and uh, he's had some big-time offers recently, but uh, he was at Boston College for the barbecue, and we talked to him a little bit after that camp. So there's a few names still floating around, and as I always say with Boston College football, the, you know, you see all the names up on Twitter. You see all their, you know, bragging about uh, – Uh, tweets there's always a name that pops up it seems with the staff that you don't expect last year with cj burton jr i was not aware of that and maybe i just missed it but he came out of nowhere he flipped from florida i still think boston college recruiting has some some trick up their sleeve that we're like something that's gonna pop that we're not expecting so you know maybe they have a kid that's on another roster that just not they're trying to keep it quiet or they're you know they're working behind the scenes on someone that they really want to get there um we just haven't heard who that will be yet so keep your eyes open on that 
And one little basketball recruiting news, because you like these nuggets. Perry Smith is going to um, announce his top seven, and I'm doing this before he announces it. I'm going to guarantee you that Boston College is on that. Perry Smith is a power forward from South Carolina. His uncle is Earl Grant. So I know he wants to come on campus. He really likes Boston College. He was the first. He told me when uh, Grant got the job, uh, Smith was the first kid he called. Uh, so I think BC's in great shape. He's got a lot of offers. He's a three-star, uh, really well-regarded. I think he be a really nice fit for Boston College. Um, so if let's see if his uncle can kind of close the deal with that one. So we'll have to check that one out. Uh, in a moment, we're going to talk about Colgate. We're going to start to really look at some of these programs that Boston College is going to play. But before we do that, let's talk about Locked On ACC. Have you heard our show yet on Locked On ACC? It's hosted by the great Candace Cooper, who used to host our Locked On Heels, but now does everything ACC. This week, we're going to talk about the the top offensive players that we're looking forward to seeing, and I can't say Zay Flowers or Phil Dracovic, so you're going to have to hear who I say from another team. Same thing with defense. I can't, well, I wouldn't say anyone on our defense right now. Maybe Jaden Lars would be. I wouldn't, I, you know, but we'll talk about that. And then what team I think is going to take a giant step forward, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's, I'm going to pick someone other than Boston College uh, just because I want I have that in, as my interest in heart. I'm going to try something a little different there. So check out Locked On ACC. My show with Candace comes out on Wednesdays, and you're not going to want to miss that. So check that out. But let's also chat about BetOnline.ag. BetOnline is the fastest, easiest way to make all your sports wages, whether it's the M- MLB, UFC, MMA, Olympics, whatever you need, they have it. Before the next pitch, head on over to BetOnline on your laptop or mobile device and check out all the great sporting news sign up bonuses and contest information don't sit on the sidelines anymore as this is your chance to get into the game as teams prep for their run to the playoffs head on over now and use promo code locked on and you'll receive a 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit bet online your online sportsbook experts this is Locked On Boston College, AJ Black here. Now, I've told you before, sometimes I record different segments of the show at different times of the day, and uh, I had originally said that I was going to do a segment on UMass and a segment on uh, Colgate, but even if, with that, I'm like, man, you don't really need to hear that much about Colgate, because honestly, it's going to be uh, a small game, but... Um, there was some news that broke while we were while uh, in between my segments that I was recording. I want to make sure that I touch upon it. So I apologize if you're waiting for a riveting Colgate report, but here we go. So uh, earlier today, a report came out from a radio station, I believe, that Clemson and Florida State were talking to the SEC about joining the conference. And of course, with co- every conference realignment story, this one absolutely blew up the internet, just like every conference realignment story does. And, uh, Matt Smith, I believe, from On3C Sports and um, Eric McLean from the ACC Network to say that Clemson had not been in touch with um, the SEC. So that kind of wraps that story up. But it made me think a little bit because I've talked about it before that Boston College and the rest of the ACC are locked into what's called a grant of rights, meaning that they have both the conference and them are buying into basically each other for the next, I think it's the next 15 years. It's to 2035. Now, if a team was to leave, that could change the whole grant of rights and that could blow up the ACC. But right now with every team locked in, they're not moving anywhere. And Florida State and Clemson, in order to move, would incur, from what I've heard, over $100 million in fees. It would be so astronomically expensive out of their penalties, early exit fees, and loss of like revenue that both schools would be hosed if they tried to even, fix, even to break that. So when I hear that they're going to leave for you know the SEC, which would be like, what, like $10 million more a year? The numbers don't add up, and it doesn't make any sense. So be careful what you're reading online, I think is the main point of uh, this little piece here, because, you know, all the. I, I think what someone said online is the best when you hear realignment stories. Trust your sources. If you have a guy like Pete Thamel or Bruce Feldman or Pat Ford or uh, Ross Dellinger of SI, yeah, trust them. Those guys have sources that go deeper than just the AD or uh, coaches that they talk to. Don't trust guys like me. Like 
honestly, like, I don't know enough people. I know I'll, I'll be out there right off the bat to tell you who, if Boston College is, is get, getting poached by the Big, Tw- Big Ten or what's happening to the ACC. I will be the first to admit, I don't know the inner workings of all that stuff. That's not my specialty. However, Thamel, Dellinger, they know all of the the key p- playmakers, the the key pieces in all of this work, all these works between the 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 media end at ESPN and the higher ups at the a- in the ACC and all those people in between, they're connected. So if you see like a report come out, I saw something from like a barstool guy. Like no offense to barstool, I just don't think of them as like as connected as like Ross Dellinger is because they're not. And that's in many cases, there's barstool guys that are, I just don't know. I've, I honestly, the guy that, that announced it was like, a guy, like something, I think it was about the Florida state or something like that. Um, I've never really heard of him before. And, and I know most of the media people. So um, just be really careful when you hear this realignment news, who you hear it from. Now, that being said, that being said, there is still the possibility that the ACC could be poached there. It, you know, the, the SEC could find the money to, bail out Clemson and Florida State and pay off the ACC. You never know what's going to happen. I think that's what makes realignment so interesting is there's a million things that could happen. The Big 12 today, they said, you know, that they're still looking to add. They could add someone like Houston and SMU and all of a sudden now you have a Texas conference and that looks really attractive, right? So there's still a lot of balls to fall. There's a lot of dominoes that could fall. Right now, I would not put my money on Florida State and Clemson happening. And I know a lot of Boston College fans are out there fretting that, you know, these reports are out there. Um, but I think for now, you can still breathe. I still, I still think that things are still going to be okay. And we'll find out more as that goes along. Now, in a moment, I'm going to talk about Colgate. I'm going to talk about UMass and we'll kind of wrap up our conversation about these two schools and the first two games in Boston College season. But before we do that, let's talk about rockauto.com. Rock Auto is a family business that have been serving auto park customers for over 20 years. If you head over to rockauto.com, you're going to save time and money. Why spend 30, 50, or even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? Rock Auto is a family business serving customers for over 20 years and their prices are low. Gotta check them out. All you have to do is head on over, you enter your make and model, and they'll pump out everything that they have for your car, whether it's brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, or even new carpet. Go explore their easy-to-use website today and find the solutions for all your auto parts car and needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. And write locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need rockauto.com the locked on boston college podcast is supported in part by the charlestown law group you need to know about the charlestown law group if you or someone you know have recently received a traffic violation speeding or other moving violation that you would like to contest then you need to call the charlestown law group attorney jason campbell and his team can and will help you fight the ticket Did you know that a moving violation can stay on your insurance record for five to six years? One conviction can cost you thousands of dollars. If you want to win, you generally need an attorney. Why not hire a professional litigator with a track record of success? Jason Campbell at Charlestown Law Group will fight for you. He's a proud Boston College graduate. Attorney Campbell is an experienced litigator that will be able to tell you if you have merit before you go to court, saving you both time and money. The Charlestown Law Group will fight tickets anywhere in Massachusetts, and they have discounted rates for both Boston college students and alumni the charlestown law group specializes in traffic violations and they will fight for you you need to call them immediately at 617-872-8652 again that's 617-872-8652 for a free consultation or visit charlestownlawgroup.com go eagles this is locked on boston college aj black here we're going to start doing our season uh, oppositional previews heading into the 2021 season. And to end this this segment, we're going to get into two games that I have down as Boston College as a 100% winning uh, probability, and that is Colgate and UMass. Now, normally, I'm going to give you one segment, one team. This one, because it's Colgate and because it's UMass, I can't. I, I, I couldn't get. It. I could. I, I just can't dive into Colgate that much. So we, the season starts off on September fourth at home against Colgate. Now Boston College has a um, relationship with Colgate because Tem Lokabooth, Boston College's defensive coordinator, played for Colgate. 
So this is a big game for him. Now, I don't mean to discredit any team Boston College plays, but you have to be realistic when you look at who Colgate is. They're a Patriot League team, and they went 0-2 last year. And they just fired their head coach for reasons we won't know, but um, they fired their head coach as well. So you have a team in the Patriot League. Uh, If you remember, Boston College played Holy Cross in 2018, and they blew the doors off of them. This is not like an FCS team like Richmond or a team like Maine or Villanova who, you know, can hang around a little bit before BC ends up beating them badly. The Patriot League is a FCS conference a little below where that is. And Boston College, I mean, I don't expect Phil Phil Jakovic to play until halftime in this game. I expect him to play, you know, probably the first quarter and a half, and then we're going to see Dennis Grossell and some freshmen playing. Uh, You know, there's a lot to look for. You're going to see a lot of depth players in this game with BC. I think Boston College wins this probably 35-plus points more likely 42. And again, not a disrespect. This is just that type of game. It's the beginning of the season. You're going to have it at home at Boston College. These players are going to be amped up too, because this is the first time Boston College, some of these players have ever played in front of fans at BC. And for others, like Phil Jakovic hasn't played in it, you know, in front of fans at Alumni Stadium. But others, this is just, just you know, it's going to be so emotional for them to have fans back in the stadium. So I'm going to pick BC to win big time in this. Now, minute the, the UMass Minutemen, the second game of the season, um, let's, let's do a little story here before we get into this. Now, I've talked about this at length on different podcasts that UMass fans hate me. And I understand why, because I don't give their program much respect. I will give them respect now, because I think Greg Carvel and that hockey program are very good. Their football team under Walt Bell, not so much. But I think they may improve this year. Um, last year, they have to, because last year they got outscored 40-3 to in games where they just could not score at all. Their offense does not look very good. Um, but this game is going to be held at UMass uh, on campus at Amherst. This is the first game I think BC has played at Amherst in years. Uh, you know, the the previous couple UMass games were held at Foxborough, which seemed like more of a BC uh, home game than anything. you got to imagine going into this game that it's going to be a hostile environment because UMass fans hate Boston College. Uh, so this is going to be their Super Bowl. This is going to what they're going to feel... Um, They're going to get their energy up. They're going to feel energized. They're going to beat the Eagles. They're going to whatever. And you're going to see it a lot on Twitter. I'm sure you're going to see it on Twitter with UMass fans feeling cocky about this game. But don't be twisted. Uh, Let's be realistic here. The UMass has not, you know, I think it was Tom Fornelli of CBS Sports just did his rankings of teams. He had Boston College at 42. He had UMass at 130, the dead last in the country. This team has, I, 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 you know, Look at everything, and you could. I could go down and tell you about their quarterback. I could tell you about their offensive line. I could go in, into what their nitty gritty is, and I'm not going to do that because honestly, who cares? It's UMass. The piece that I look at when I say why Boston College is going to smoke UMass, and they're going to smoke UMass. I don't care if it's on the road or if it's at at at, at uh, Conti, uh, Alumni Stadium. The reason BC is going to smoke UMass is who is going to cover Zay Flowers on UMass. You need top-end cornerbacks to cover him. And sure, okay, so, yeah, you know, AJ, maybe they're going to throw a safety on him and bracket him on every play. Good luck then. Yeah, Trey Berry's going to run for 150 yards. Or Kobe White's going to score. Or they've got a million different things. Phil Draco, you know, the worst thing that UMass could do is start playing like, you know, overcompensating on one one um, target because the other players are going to still do it. And you could probably still double cover Zay Flowers and he's still going to catch it. Um, I don't think UMass has a chance here. And, I, you know, I'm going to get a lot of responses from fans that say I'm not being respectful to UMass. Watch some of the games that they've played against BC. And you can see it gets even some of the bad BC games. I think it was when Pat Patrick Towles, uh, Tolles, excuse me, was the quarterback. Like those teams were not that great on offense, and they still beat UMass pretty easily. The UMass teams have gone backwards since then. Um, I don't think BC wins by any less than like thirty-five in this game. Um, I, I like Boston College to win big. So 
when we get into some of the other ACC teams, we'll get into more of the nitty gritty of where BC lines up against them um, because I know a lot more about them. But these two teams, the win probability for BC should be 100 for both of these games. Colgate does, should not stand a chance. UMass should not stand a chance. So that's where I think we should be. We should end that conversation. Now, on tomorrow's show, we're going to continue our conversation with two more games, Temple and we're going to look at Missouri. And we're going to talk about what those two games could look like for Boston College, look at the strengths and weaknesses of both teams, and figure out where they're going to go from there. Now, if you like our podcast, please listen to Locked On Boston College wherever you get your podcast. And if you like this, make it part of your routine. Easiest way to do that, if you're doing a, rec- uh, a uh, commute home, you know, turn us turn us on. It's it, We have a month until kickoff. It's just one more day until a month until BC kicks off against Colgate. You're going to want to make sure that you listen. I'm going to start going to practices hopefully soon. I'm going to get, you know, interviews. All that good stuff is going to start coming up. You want to make sure that you get this wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you find us on Locked on BC on Twitter. And you can check us out all over the place. And YouTube news, I apologize. I kind of pumped it up a little bit too quickly because I just I just found out from my boss. It's going to probably take a few more weeks. I have the I have like the page. I just can't produce on it yet. So the YouTube page is coming. Just check it out soon. Have a great Tuesday, everyone.